The Battle of Taranto, also known as the First Pearl Harbor, took place during the night of November 11th, 1940, at the port of Taranto in Apulia, Italy. The British were concerned that Italy's presence in the Mediterranean could disrupt their supply line in Africa and the Middle East, so Admiral Andrew Cunningham coordinated a decisive Royal Navy attack to neutralize the potential threat. Cunningham then launched the first all-aircraft ship-to-ship naval attack in history, using 20 reliable ferry swordfish biplane torpedo bombers provided by the aircraft carrier HMS Illustrious. The British attack took the Regia Marina anchored at the Taranto Harbor by surprise and decisively proved the ascendancy of naval aviation over the weaponry employed by battleships. The Japanese would carefully study what happened at Taranto to strike Pearl Harbor only a year later. Eliminating the Opposition Great Britain's Royal Navy had ruled over the Mediterranean, Atlantic, and Pacific Oceans as far back as the times of Nelson during the 19th century. The British gained supremacy at sea once the Spanish Empire crumbled and its army and navy lost strength in America and Europe, followed by the French. It was vital for Britain to dominate the oceans and guard the main routes employed by its trade ships that serviced the empire across all continents. From America, Europe, and Africa to Asia and Australia, the Royal Navy soon had indisputable supremacy over the Seven Seas. During World War I, the British exploited their superiority and conducted an effective naval blockade that prevented the German Kriegsmarine from performing successful naval operations outside the Northern Sea. Only their legendary U-boats were able to break away from the surveillance of the Royal Navy. However, when World War II broke out after Britain and France declared war on Hitler in the Third Reich, the tide quickly changed in Germany's favor. Then, after France surrendered to the restless Blitzkrieg forces in 1940, the United Kingdom suddenly found itself fighting independently. Furthermore, the Third Reich planned to use its French allies and incorporate the French Navy into the Kriegsmarine's operations, thus increasing the tension surrounding the Royal Navy. If that were to happen, British dominance would be seriously threatened by the Germans for the first time in almost two centuries, and the United Kingdom could not afford to lose its grip over the oceans. And to make matters worse, Mussolini and Italy declared war on the British on June 10, 1940. Although Italy's Regia Marina was not as powerful as it once was a few decades earlier, it was still a formidable force. The fleet had several strategic harbors at its disposal, from which the Axis could launch attacks on Malta and dominate the Mediterranean Sea. To tackle this adversity, the Royal Navy needed to act fast, and it was concluded that the most significant threat to the country was the French fleet, stationed at Mars El Kabir, French Algeria, in North Africa. Launching Operations The objective of Operation Catapult was to neutralize or destroy the French fleet in North Africa to prevent it from falling into German hands. Germany's current truce with France allowed autonomy to the French Navy and only required that the French fleet stay in port and remain neutral in the conflict. Because of this, the French sailors refused to obey Britain's orders to leave port and sail straight to the British Isles for safe harbor. The situation led to a violent and treacherous British attack on July 3, 1940. The bombardment resulted in more than 1,300 French casualties and the destruction of several battleships. Once the French fleet was neutralized, the Royal Navy turned to Italy to eliminate its fleet and recover its supremacy in the Mediterranean. However, this required meticulous planning, and Operation MB-8 was thus launched. The Royal Navy planned to counter the Regia Marina that dated to before World War II. Opposing the naval power of other nations was part of British tradition, and the Royal Navy had been planning to take action against the port of Taranto as far back as the aftermath of the Italian invasion of Abyssinia in 1935. The Regia Marina fleet had been stationed there since the early 1930s. When Mussolini decided to launch military operations in Libya to satisfy his territorial thirst and stop the British supply line in Egypt, the Royal Navy created Operation Judgment, which finally called for the destruction of the Italian fleet at Taranto. One Navy to rule them all. The war in North Africa soon intensified between the Italians, the French, and the British forces. 
As long as the Regia Marina remained in Taranto, English supply convoys had to cross the Mediterranean through Gibraltar and Malta and be prey to Italian fire. Because of this, they now needed to steam around the Cape of Good Hope and make their way to the top of Africa through the Suez Canal. Following this safer route was slow and took much longer, but it was only a matter of time before the British ground units began struggling for supplies. The British couldn't lure out the Italian navy to destroy it, as Admiral Inigo Campioni knew too well that his forces could not be easily replaced. Instead, the Royal Navy would take the fight to Taranto, following a plan suggested by Lumley Leicester, the captain of the aircraft carrier HMS Glorious. Leicester's strategy was centered around the old but reliable Ferry Swordfish biplane torpedo bombers, capable of conducting a night attack on Taranto when the Italians least expected it. Upon approval from Admiral Andrew Cunningham, the Royal Navy then began training its men for the secret endeavor. The British task force, led by now Admiral Leicester, consisted of light cruisers Berwick, York, Glasgow, and Gloucester, destroyers Hyperion, Ilex, Hasty, and the aircraft carrier HMS Illustrious. The 24 swordfish bombers aboard Illustrious came from various naval air squadrons from the fleet air arm. And although these warplanes comprised the main British aerial force, several ferry Fulmer fighters were also recruited to provide air cover. Several reconnaissance flights by Martin Marylands took pictures of the Italian fleet at Taranto during the first week of November 1940. The Italians did not suspect that an attack was coming their way, and the obtained intelligence indicated that the Italian fleet at Taranto consisted of six battleships, seven heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, and eight destroyers. All the ships were defended by 100 anti-aircraft guns and more than 180 machine guns located in the port. Barrage balloons also protected the entrance in case of an attack by low-fighting aircraft like the Swordfish, and anti-torpedo nets protected one-third of the fleet. The British task force made the necessary modifications to their plan and scheduled the attack for November 11th. The Battle The first wave of 12 Swordfish, under the command of Lieutenant Commander Kenneth Williamson, took to the skies at around 9 p.m., while the second wave left Illustrious almost two hours later, under cover of night. Williamson's wave consisted of six swordfish with torpedoes, four with 110-kilogram conventional bombs, and two with flares. This air force approached the harbor at around 11 p.m., when a swordfish with flares left formation and dropped 16 flares to light up the port. The Italian watch officers were caught entirely off guard, and they were suddenly under attack. The loud alarm woke up the Italian sailors sleeping in their ships, but it was too late. Two swordfish came down from the sky and made a dive-bombing attack, setting fire to oil tanks. Williamson and the rest of the aircraft then began to pick off the capital ships, but as the commander approached the battleship Conte di Cavour, his swordfish was shot down by anti-aircraft gunfire. Still, Williamson managed to drop a torpedo that blasted an eight-meter hole in Conte's side while the rest of the swordfishes dodged the barrage balloons and continued dropping torpedoes. Battleship Vittoria was then hit by two torpedoes, and the rest missed a strike on the Andrea Doria. Captain O. Patch's unit suddenly attacked with everything they had, and two cruisers were put out of commission with a single torpedo, while four destroyers were damaged in the following minutes. The second wave appeared next and launched more flares to identify its targets, hitting Vittoria with another torpedo. Lieutenant Commander J.W. Hale then approached and hit battleship Duilio, blowing part of its hull. Several other ships were hit, and the entire force then retreated and got back to the aircraft carrier by 2 a.m. Only two men and two aircraft were lost on the British side, which was quite an accomplishment when compared to the losses suffered by the Italians. Half of the Italian force was put out of commission in just one night. The Italians would retaliate a year later when a group of frogmen carried out a raid on Alexandria to destroy Valiant and Queen Elizabeth. Admiral Cunningham would later say that, quote, Taranto, on the night of November 11th, 1940, should be remembered forever as having shown once and for all that in the fleet air arm, the Navy has its most devastating weapon. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. Also, hit the bell icon to get notified of our newest content, and let us know in the comments below what you think of the Battle of Taranto.